exactly what the production volt will be. Um, from an electric driving experience, they're very, very close. Uh, they're so-called production intent vehicles. And we have about, uh, what, 30 of these, Frank? Yes, 35. Uh, driving with which we're accumulating miles and um, doing all the engineering testing and refinement. I, I would say that I'll, I'll take you back two years in time when we um, introduced the Volt concept at the Detroit Auto Show in, in January 2007. And you'll remember all of the talk from um, many people who were skeptical. Some, uh, some of our leading Japanese competitors said, uh, I don't believe any of this. Lithium ion is, is not suitable for automotive use. Uh, we know better. We're using nickel metal hydride, the only proper battery technology for, uh, for automobile use. And uh, GM will never make this work, nor do they intend to make it work. This is just a public relations ploy to take your mind off the fact that, they do, that they're, they're making gas guzzling sport utilities, and so forth and so on. And in the meantime, I will tell you, um, we are making excellent progress. Uh, the lithium ion technology is working just fine. Uh, Frank, can, Frank or Tony can give you some of the details of some of the chemical iterations that we've gone through, but it's basically just been minor tweaking of the chemistry to get exactly the, uh, exactly the properties we want. Um, the um, vehicle is meeting its performance objectives. Um, we, we think we've got a good handle on, on battery life. And um, I will tell you that at this point we are, I, I would say, supremely confident that this vehicle will be on the market uh, in the tail end, or in production at the tail end of 2010, um, with a high degree of reliability and, you know, and a high degree of customer pleasability. So, without further ado, I'll uh, now turn it over to Frank, who has the as the real facts. Thanks very much. No, I say, what should I say? Between, uh, in this? We are confident that the technology is working in our cars. The vehicles you will drive today and the new technology that you see, the purpose of those components in those cars is to finalize all the propulsion assumptions. Propulsion means battery, power electronics, electric motors, uh, and then how it works with the engine. The reason why you will experience the EV driving today is there is still a lot of, I would say, speculation of how an electric vehicle feels. And especially with where we wanted to be with the Volt was we wanted to create a very capable electric propulsion system. The idea always was to generate a car that is capable of being the first car in the household, not just the third or the fourth car with a compromised, with a compromised electric drive system. It should be a vehicle that can just replace a car with conventional technology. So if you drive today in the vehicles, I'd like to ask you to especially evaluate the drive train when it comes to that goal of being a full vehicle. With everything you know, just make the evaluation by yourself and say, is this, is this, do they achieve this goal? Because what you see today in the electric vehicle space are very different concepts. You see extreme sports cars, or cars that are done for city purposes, and there is nothing in that space that is really I would say capable of being that car that people expect to also generate high volume. Now, the learnings that we get from our new cars here are essential for the fleet vehicles that we are building up starting in June. So we are moving from this new phase, which is a component testing phase, into the total vehicle uh, integration uh, phase. So we will see, starting in June, real vaults. Exterior, interior, everything will be then production components in a car and we are starting then a fleet of 80 vehicles this summer uh, for final validation before it goes into the manufacturing readiness process uh, basically next, uh, next year. So this is the next step. So all the findings from those new cars as they go into those next level prototypes are really, really essential to make the timing work. We haven't seen any obstacle that would prevent us from achieving 2010 
uh, November, this does not mean that this is an easy development. I have to remind you, doing an extended range electric vehicles is not trivial, it is very, very complex. Many things have not been invented before, and there is nothing that we can use as reference point. Not, not within our organization, not with suppliers, because we are inventing that, that technology. So when it comes to charging, customer interaction, the thermal management of batteries and cabins and stuff on all of this, so there is not that single obstacle. Nevertheless, there is still almost one and a half years of a lot of engineering development work that needs to happen to integrate all of the components into one uh, high quality solution. So this is, uh, but there's nothing in particular that is boring more than uh, another thing. The capability of those cars that you will experience today, they are 80% capable, I say 80% because when it comes to the components that are being used and the software level that is being used, that you have to just find uh, that there is more refinement and still more performance left uh, in, the, in the prototypes that will start in summer. But directionally, as Bob has pointed out, this gives you, I think, a very, very good impression of what the propulsion system is uh, capable of delivering. Okay? Let's see. You might just point out the, why, we, why we place importance on it being called an extended range electric vehicle, but not a plug-in hybrid. I did, just to remind, and but I have to say it again, and, and thanks, Bob, for reminding me. When I just come from the Global Electric Vehicle Symposium. This is a yearly event. All the electric people are coming there. And what you still see is that it was people are still saying, oh, this is a hybrid vehicle that you are doing just because we have an engine that can generate electricity. I said, no. Nope. And we had actually lots of discussions there where I said, this car is an electric vehicle. And since we know what the shortfalls of electric vehicles are when it comes to range capability and, and other things we said the idea of an extended range electric vehicle is the starting point to come to high volume to a functional vehicle that is practical that people can use and this is all part of the story extended range electric vehicles are the only electric vehicles that really have in the, in the, in the I would say midterm and even long term the potential to come down in price points and satisfy people when it comes to their needs, what the what the vehicles have to do in their The garage. key thing is, it, it, it never the, the internal combustion engine never drives the vehicle. So it is generating electricity, so it still remains to be an electric vehicle, but it doesn't leave you stranded. So we have to say, if I look at all the potential technologies that are out there, I strongly feel that this is the one technology that gives you uh, Independence from petroleum and cold, cold start capability, yeah, which, is, which the pure EV does not have. So there are many reasons why this combination is particularly attractive. Almost to look at the battery and the challenges with batteries from the other side, and you start shrinking a battery to a reasonable size instead of wanting to increase it and increase it and increase it. I think this does not. I think it's no path to the future. <laughs>